visitors that weren't with us, we visited the World War II Museum. Took the whole team over there and paid respect to those people that paved the way, our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents that paved the way so we could do what we love to do, play the game of football and enjoy quality of life. I think we all learned something from that. I know I did. I learned something from you guys all season long about teamwork, intestinal fortitude, sticking together, covering each other, trust, camaraderie, respect, and love for each other. Learn that from you guys. Special group P. We're going to wrap this up today with an Arena Bowl championship. But before we get there, I want to introduce a young man that I met only a few months ago, but an incredible inspiration. You may have seen him if you watch the ESPYs, where he won the Inspiration Award. Incredible human being. And along the way, all of us have had stop signs, detours, red lights, caution lights. People tell us what we can't do. Small, too slow, don't throw it hard enough, don't catch well enough. Someone's told you what you couldn't do. You had a chance tonight to be a world champion. All those doubting Thomases that said you couldn't do it, you're playing to be the world champion. This young man, I'm going to introduce Cal Maynard. His whole life, people told him what he couldn't do. He was born with no arms and no legs. He's in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. He didn't climb Mount Kilimanjaro. He crawled up Mount Kilimanjaro. All the people that said the things he couldn't do, he proved them wrong. Just like tonight, you're going to prove all those doubting Thomas that said you couldn't do it. You're going to prove those people wrong. You're going to be world champions, just like Kyle Maynard is a world champion. I'd like to give him the floor for 10 to 12 minutes and give us some inspiration what it's about beating the odds. Kyle Maynard. Such a, a huge honor to get a chance to go and talk to you guys. Right? I mean, when when Ron uh, asked me about you know, coming out to the game and getting a chance to just to be here and experience this, it was an unbelievable honor for me. But to be able to go and share this moment with you is just a really, really special one. So football's got a pretty special place in my heart. I wouldn't be talking to you guys without the game. I mean, I was uh, 11 years old really in a spot where I had a lot of doubt in terms of what the rest of my life is going to look like, you know, the future, you know, I was born without my arms and legs and whatever, be able to have a normal career someday, a normal life, you know, um, and I just didn't have that sense of direction, and uh, I found uh, a flyer from school, brought it home, showed it to mom, and she told her to ask her if she'd go and bring me out to the tryouts, and she said that she would, and the coach, they wanted to come out, and Went down in all fours, ran the bear crawl, 40, 40 yard dash through the kids' shovel run. I remember ended up, you know, making the team, choosing number eight, and going and wearing my jersey to go to the quarterbacks, scoring a touchdown out there. Ended up, um, coach told me to go and line up as a nose guard. The very first day of practice, defensive line, like, I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I'd watched the game before, but you know, right across from the center, he just had one job, and it said just, you know, follow the ball. So it was, uh, Sarah was going to snap the ball, ended up diving underneath his legs, messing him up so bad the quarterback fell over and got in the sack. First play. <laughs> that night, <laughs> the, uh, that first real game that I played at night, I had so much, too many nerves coming into it. The opposing coach told my coach, he said, he was, um, he said, I think it's a real special humanitarian thing that you're out here letting this disabled kid play football, but he said, you know, don't worry, they're not going to run the ball anywhere near him. And my coach brought me over and told him that same story. And after he did, he said, I dare you to test Kyle. We came out to the huddle, and 10 other teammates were talking about how you know, scared we were to go and tackle the running back from the other team, and you know, this kid was like the only 11-year-old I've ever seen with full facial hair and biceps. You know? <laughs> But he came, you know, big running back comes crashing through the line on the very first play, and he grabbed hold of his legs and held on as hard as I could. He dragged me for about five yards, but I got him down. You know, it was, in every game, you know, they're going play in. Beyond that, too, it went from there to just go on and, and wrestle, and, and as Ron mentioned there, too, people would go and, and say things. Like, they'd go and make that 
you know, logical argument to go and try to present, to go and say that, like, a guy without arms and legs, there's no way he could go and play football. There's no way he could go and, you know, wrestle and do all these things. They've said the same things about you. You know, there's no way you guys can come off your season last year to come back into this season and go and win a championship. It's a lot. He came out there, you know, with wrestling. The problem was for me, though, is I bought into that belief for 35 matches in a row. When I first started off, I lost every single match. And they go and say, Kyle doesn't have hands to grab somebody. He doesn't have reach to go and reach out and get somebody's legs. There's no way a guy without limbs can win a match in wrestling. I remember that first kid that I, that I beat, and it just shattered that belief. I went and grabbed this kid's arm, took him down, landed on top of him. I was more shocked than anybody else. <laughs> My dad was screaming, who's that? I to go and do to him. I, you know, I figured I'd just you know, I'd go and do the same move again, let him up, went in after him again, grabbed him, took his arm, took him down, let him up. Took him out and let him up 15 times in that match. Went from that season, that's the last losing season I ever had. Senior year in high school, won 36 varsity matches, placed top 12 in the nation. You know, it's, it's no different. You know, Ron mentioned one of my dreams is climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. You know, I, I view Kilimanjaro as that same experience as you guys, you know, coming into the world championship game. That was my world championship game. I had, you know, I mean, all the excitement, the you know, drilling coming out of the gate, you know, hit that hit the trail the first day. Kilimanjaro is the tallest freestanding peak in the world. It's not a part of a mountain chain, so you see this thing just standing there, just massive. I mean, 19,340 feet, 38 miles to the top. You know, we come through, though, and it was come day four, day five, I'm crawling out on all fours. I was in a lot of pain. You know, you guys, it's no different than this game's going to be, you know, right? You're, you know, your whole body is, you know, screaming at you. You know, you're giving everything that you got, but, you, you know, you're halfway through. You know, we're standing up there. I was sitting at 14,000 feet. I came into the tent for my fifth day when we pulled into camp. I just broke. I broke, and I was just, just falling, crying. My friends were having fun playing cards, doing their own thing, and I was just like, I didn't know if I could make it. That next day, we had to go back down to 11,000 feet and up and down through three different valleys. Going downhill for me, walking on all fours, is almost like holding a handstand push up. It's, it's brutal on my shoulders. My ends of my arms were screaming. I didn't know if I could go and make it. And it was like right then, you know, I remembered something that was more important than you know, just that, even that uh, achievement for myself. It was connecting to something something more. I remember we had, we wanted to go and send a message to the veteran community as the lost limbs defending our freedom to go and say that, you know what, no matter what setback you've been hit with, you're capable of living the life that you want. The two, we got to have a 10th member who was really the spirit of our team and make Corey Johnson, corporal who had lost his life in Afghanistan last year when I promised his mom I'd bring his ashes to the summit. So I just kept repeating this mantra in my head that I'd heard from this Navy SEAL. This mantra was, not dead, can't quit. And I just kept repeating that to myself, not dead, can't quit. And we kept moving. And on the 10th day, through giant ice fields, rocks, you know, snow fields, up to the roof of Africa, we got to stand on top of that mountain higher than any peak there. To go and you know win that world championship game, that that feeling there, standing on the top of the peak. But more than anything else, it's that feeling that you go in and give and spread to everybody else. You know, you know your purpose. What brought you here to this point? But I think when you are at the ropes and you're about to go and give, you know, just your body screaming at you to quit, you got to connect to that. And that sense of why, why, you know, why it is that you know it brought you here. Find that why. Find that truth. You know, and you can go out there and uh, bring home that championship tonight. I'm very excited for you guys.